This is another great story. Now, Christopher Steele was hired by Fusion GPS, who was hired by Perkins Coy, a law firm, who was hired by the Clinton campaign and the uh, Democratic National Committee. So the, those two, Cl the Clinton campaign used the law firm as a cutout to hire Fusion GPS, who hired Christopher Steele, who was a former spy for the United Kingdom. Now, Steele is an anti-Trumper, and he uh, created the dossier. He was the author, well, the alleged author of the dossier. He put a lot of it together. Uh, there's reason to believe there are others in the Clinton world involved, uh, like Sidney Blumenthal. I'll look up his name. You'll see he's someone uh, who shouldn't have been anywhere near the Justice Department and FBI. But Christopher Steele used sources from abroad, including in Russia, Russia intelligence sources to basically launder dirt about Donald Trump into the Clinton, uh, excuse me, into the, well, it was the Clinton DOJ, wasn't it? But the Obama-run Justice Department and the FBI. And they knew it was dirt. I don't mean dirt in the sense it was true. I mean dirt in the, in the sense it was false. And as James Comey said, salacious and unverified information. And they used that dossier information created by Christopher Steele to, uh, uh, as a central theme of these Pfizer warrants that I told you we found, or we were able to uncover. First time Pfizer warrants have ever been released publicly. They're heavily redacted, uh, but they show the Clinton DNC dossier was central. They wouldn't have had these warrants but for the dossier. And in, this, in these warrants, they reference the dossier, they reference articles about the dossier, they reference State Department documents about the dossier, they reference, reference congressional concerns about the dossier, while all pretending all of those are separate issues They don't have anything to do with the one dossier. Talk about le misleading and lying to the courts. And the key source, as they point out in this document, is source number one, and that's Christopher Steele. So we're very interested in the relationship the FBI had with Christopher Steele. And Christopher Steele uh, was alleged to have been paid by the FBI. Uh, even the FBI acknowledges they had to drop him as a source, even because he was leaking to the media. Of course, that's what he was kind of hired to do by the Clinton gang. And, uh, but of course, the DOJ tried to use him, kept on using him as a source on the sly through Bruce Orr, who was number four at the Justice Department, whose wife worked for Fusion GPS, who was paying Steele as well. So we asked for documents about payments to Christopher Steele. We asked for documents about, let me see, let me see what they, well, let me see exactly what we asked for here so I can tell you. Records of communications with the FBI, between the FBI and Steele, um, the payments to Steele, you know, and other things related to the FBI's communications with Steele. And so we asked for those records. Again, Judicial Watch is always on the ball here. Uh, we asked for these records back in uh, March of this year. No, March of last year. We ended up having to sue at the end of last year. So uh, because they ignored our request for information. So they finally gave us the documents today, or at least part of the documents. And they are 70 pages. The first page has text. The last page has text. In between, almost virtually redacted. Everything, every detail of note is redacted. But what is unredacted is important because it shows that Christopher Steele in November fir on November 1st of 2016 was essentially cut off as a confidential human source by the FBI. He was deemed not suitable for use, I quote from the language. The documents include a, and this is the first document, a source closing communication that states that Steele, which is referred to, who is referred to throughout as a confidential human source, a CHS, is being closed because, and I'm going to read you why he was being closed, because uh, CHS confirmed to an outside third party that CHS, which again Steele, has a confidential relationship with the FBI. CHS was used as a source 
for an online article. In the article, CHS revealed CHS's relationship with the FBI as well as information that CHS obtained and provided to FBI. On November 1st, 2016, he confirmed all of this to the handling agent at the time. At that time, handling agent advised CHS that the nature of the relationship between the FBI and CHS would change completely and that it was unlikely the FBI, FBI would continue a relationship with the CHS. Additionally, handle, handling agent advised the CHS was not to operate to obtain any intelligence whatsoever on behalf of the FBI. He's told not to operate to obtain any intelligence on behalf of the FBI anymore. Suggests he was doing that beforehand. The documents we sought were for the date range, I think of November through uh, November, uh, for, you know, the beginning of January 16 uh, through the end of the year. And the documents show they had 13 contact reports with Steele. Again, this is a Clinton campaign vendor. So the Clinton campaign and the FBI were in partnership funding Steele. Of course, they knew the Clinton campaign was doing it, so it wasn't like the FBI didn't know Steele was also working for the Clinton campaign. They did. They didn't tell the American people that. They didn't tell the courts that. 15 source reports, which means these were reports created based on information Steele was providing them. 11 payment requests. So he was paid 11 of the 13 times he met with the FBI. Don't uh, these documents, they show the payment request, but no detail. Amounts, nothing. What he was paid for, how much. And more, uh, also interestingly, the last page, an electronic communication documenting that on February 2nd, 2016, Steele was admonished admonished in accordance with DOJ guidelines and the FBI's uh, confidential human source policy handling manual. So this guy uh, was, was warned about misconduct as he's working with the FBI to target Donald Trump. And it gets so bad that they officially paper the record say we can't work with you anymore. Uh, you know, and as I look at these documents, it's a little bit vague as to whether they actually cut them off or not, isn't it? I mean, it says it's the CHS is being closed, you know, but he was told, at least according to the report, that it may, it may be closed. So I think that's curious. But again, it's Judicial Watch getting this information. I'm sure, I, mean, I don't know if the Intelligence Committee or folks with security clearances had access to see this. Because this was, um, I don't know if it was, yeah, it was unclassified for Judicial Watch's lawsuit. So it was previously classified material that Judicial Watch was, unable, was able to obtain, that Congress was unable to obtain. Congress, I kept point to Congress because Congress is up here from our office. But the media is unable to obtain, but Judicial Watch is able to obtain. Because we go to court and we're aggressive, and we don't take no for an answer until the courts tell us we have to take no for an answer, which is more often than I like to, uh, uh, I like to, I like to happen. So this guy, this Christopher Steele, who was at the center of these warrants, was corrupt. He was doing things the FBI didn't tell him to do. He's being paid by the FBI. It was a corrupt, cash-based relationship between the Obama FBI and this Clinton uh, vendor. And they were using Russia intelligence sources to come up with dirt on President Trump. And they used the dossier to try to uh, ambush Trump, I recall, the Jeff, uh, you know, James Comey, you may recall confronted Trump with the information in January of 2017, and Trump got upset, rightly so, because it wasn't true. And of course, Comey admitted it wasn't true, but he used that information to try to get, to get FISA warrants successfully. And this source, this corrupted source, was used by the DOJ and the FBI to justify spying on the Trump team.